Today we're going to talk about uh, different communications options. Uh, this is just some of the stuff I have. I have a, not everything out here laid on the table, but this is most of it. And just to kind of give you an, just an idea of uh, different things, uh, starting as simply as uh, using your phone with this little three millimeter adapter and plugging it into a set of Walker ra uh, razors. Uh, they work out pretty well. I use that at the range sometimes if you want to listen to some music while you're uh, shooting or need to take a phone call or anything like that. You know, all the way up to uh, contacts uh, hooked up to this Yesu. Uh, that's pretty much the most uh, say comprehensive thing that I've got set up right now. But uh, let's just dive into it and talk about all the individual things that you see here. All right, so we already t talked about using your uh, phone as a communications device, obviously, you know. Grids up, everything's working normal, um, cell towers are working, and that's that's a great little option while uh, things are, uh, you know, everything's up and running. Um, there may be a time when you don't have access. There's been times, you know, we've had uh, tornadoes out in my area that have uh, knocked out cell service and uh, other, other things. And even at some sporting events, um, NASCAR races, Indy, whatever, They'll have, uh, I guess, cell t towers block out everything except for uh, emergency, uh, you know, first responder type stuff. Because I've gone there and you can't get a signal. And it's kind of annoying. Um, and another option here, uh, as far as, like, inexpensive ones. I got this. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, Tigret or Tigret Outdoors. Uh, plugs into a Baofeng. They've got other options for other radios. But this will plug into just your regular Walker uh, Rangers. Yeah, Razors. Can't talk today for some reason. And uh, just, you know, hooks into your your port. And um, it's got a little push to talk right here. And your microphones are right this little pinhole right here. So I'll be testing those out, see how well they work or don't work. And, uh, you know, you've got stuff as basic as just these, like, their little bubble pack. Um, Motorola's, you know, they've got maybe a couple hundred yards range, um, if that. Um, it's good for, you know, around the house or if you've got a, you know, small homestead property. Or, you know, you want to chat with the neighbors or whatever. You've got that. And if this uh, Tiger at one works out, I may end up... Uh, using this on my bump helmet and using this somewhere else. Um, this is an attachment from uh, Walker's also that attached to a razor. And it's basically like a little walkie talkie that just plugs into the port. Uh, it's not bad and you know, works good at the range, but I'd like to, I'm going to put it on a dedicated, just a regular headset to maybe wear it an indoor range. So you don't get those weird looks of uh, wearing a bump helmet in an indoor range while you want to communicate with the, uh, some or even uh, you know some of the outdoor ranges. And then over here, you know, we've got CBs. Um, and everybody's like, "Oh, CBs are dead." Whatever. Um, where this could come in handy is, uh, you know, say mobile communications are down, and uh, you, you know, if you need to uh, go head out to your bug out property, or if you're leaving an area that's being evacuated and there's a few vehicles, uh, you know, you and family members are in a few vehicles. This might be a good, good, uh, to one. Um, you can listen ahead to some truckers still use it and listen ahead for any issues with traffic or roadblocks or, you know, detours to save you some trouble. And then down here below, this is a little, um, Midland, um, GMRS radio. And I bought this G1 can, um, was it from Harden Power Systems uh, a few years ago? It's a pretty cool little setup. Uh, it's got a battery in it and everything, so you can hook up your antenna lead here. It's even got a, a port here for solar chargers, so if you've got a rechargeable battery in there, you can recharge it. But it's a, it's basically a 30 cal ammo can. The lid shuts and everything and seals up tight. And you've got a portable little uh, radio um, setup. Now, your GMRS is the first ones where you have to kind of have an FCC license for, technically. Um, <clears throat> unlike this one here, which is a family radio, doesn't require any kind of licensing. And then when you get into these here, these are technically, uh, you know, amateur radios, so you would need to get, uh, I guess the technician's license is the very uh, 
the very entry level for that. Um, however, FCC does say in an emergency situation, you can transmit without a license legally. So that's kind of up to interpretation there. But listening wise, you can uh, you can monitor and listen all you want on these without any kind of licensing. So there is that. Um, <clears throat> also, these work on a lot of different bands. Uh, you can look up all the different frequencies. That's the cool thing about this hardened power system. It lists all the GMRS frequencies, not only by channel, but actual frequency. So you can program into other radios that maybe, you know, are programmable. So that's a, a nice little um, bit of information to have, even though you can look that up and find it anywhere online. And as far as your amateur radios go, um, this is a Japanese Yesu. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I started out with this guy right here. I have a few of these. Um, the upside of the Baofang is accessories are everywhere, plentiful and cheap. Uh, like this extended battery, which this extended battery really works really well, especially on standby. Um, you can have this sitting in the console of your vehicle for a couple of years and not lose any signal strength. Uh, or, or power bars on it anyway. Um, it's like 17 bucks. And then like this Nagoya antenna was, uh, I think, 18 Which, uh, point of fact is, I had an extra one, and it actually worked on this Yesu. So these are these use the same uh, antenna, as far as I know. And then, you know, you can get the radios for like 25 bucks. So if you're kind of wanting to get into it, but you're, you know, not sure if it's something you really want to do or spend a lot of money on, you know, around 45 bucks, you can be 45, 50 bucks, you can be set up here. Um, this is actually a, a, a Beofang little knockoff of a PRC 152. And I put this uh, Abri, like four foot tall uh, antenna, it folds out. Uh, just playing with that to see if it uh, did much more. Um, you definitely got more range uh, than you do here. And bought a couple extra batteries for it. But I mean, you know, nothing too crazy. I don't like this uh, knob here. It comes, it turns too easily, so it's kind of easy to bump your uh, volume when you're not intentionally trying to. So there's not a lot of resistance there. Uh, if anyone knows of any tricks to uh, make that a little more snug and less uh, less free uh, moving, let me know. Um, but yeah, this was just kind of to be a little introductory uh, introductory video on. Um, communications ideas just things to think about uh there's definitely more you know high-end stuff out there there's digital there's encrypted there's uh you know you name it apps for phones there's all kinds of uh stuff out there today that you can spend a lot of money on and more secure comms but you know just something basic uh, for your average uh person uh on a budget or uh you know if you got to buy for a few people or family members keep them all in touch um, again, I'll go in more in depth on more of these items individually, but I just wanted to kind of give an overview, um, video here and, uh, I guess that's it today. I'm for some reason having a little difficulty talking. Uh, my brain's just not working right today.